Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of Jeep Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Today we're going to do something a little different. Well, one thing is, I got to walk out because I see a piece of paper out there just uh, flew into the property, and I want to go pick that up and put it in the fire pit. But that gave me an idea because I'm headed towards what I originally started to do in dig digging a pond. And lately that has become a little bit of a good discussion in my comments. Um, some people are wondering about that. And then put that together with uh, some comments about uh, gold panning and prospecting and all of that. And I think that would give a good, good reason to head out here, right? All right, let me pick up this piece of paper, stuff it in my pocket. <clears throat> clear my throat. Oh, there's another piece of paper over there. Oh, well. Some people don't care what happens to their trash, right? All right, let me get this one. All right. That wire you see is because I'm wearing earbuds because the winds are blowing again. But here's what I started as my pond when I had my ATV with the front loader bucket on it and uh, I had stopped at this point and I was going to keep on uh, working it every now and then wherever I had time outside of my other basic chores and duties that I have out here so I had uh, cut through the embankment there and I started a secondary pond there which would then run around the corner and have a third pond there is that a third dairy pond <sighs> Oh, there's nothing wrong with dairy unless you're allergic to it. Anyway, the uh, that connects back into the stream and keeps on going. And uh, the reason I was doing that was I wanted the deepest pond here, but sediment was going to fall off of uh, as it came in. As you can see, when we did have rains, the rains brought um, sediment down and cast it off and started filling in the pond already right there. So um, this was all designed so that one pond would be deeper than the other ponds and let the sediment fall out. And then as the water moved to the next pond and the next pond, it would actually be um, naturally filtered and a little bit cleaner each time. Well, never got any further than this. Uh, one reason was at this point, I had hit caliche. And for those of you who don't know what caliche is, uh, the scientific mumbo-jumbo about it would call it a sedimentary rock that's uh, formed as a natural cement or uh, kind of a natural concrete. And, and it's, a, it's a hardened cement, but it's uh, uh, made up of calcium carbonate and other uh, things like uh, uh, river rock and things like that. Um, gravel, sand, all of that mixes together and it gets pretty hard. And this looks like it's just sand, right? Well, it's sand on the top, but as you dig down, you'll get down to caliche. So I'll be removing this stuff here and using that when I uh, need to fill in the base of my pond. I'll be mixing that with some um, some real cement, some cement powder, and uh, mixing it in with a bunch of the rocks from the uh, rock trees that I, all those le rock leaves that are laying around my place. I'll rake those up and I'll uh, put those in. Now another thing that the water brings down is a natural clay, and uh, this clay was starting to fill in the base here and that would actually seal it and hold water longer and so there is the ground is a little soft right now probably six inches deep with that clay and uh, other sediments like sand mix and all of that but it has cracked and dried over the season of no rain so when the rains do come if they were strong enough to get this uh, filled back up it would take a while for all of that clay to mold itself back together again, and it's still not completely thick enough to hold water. 
But what I was thinking, because uh, there's something that I've mentioned before, and uh, some of you have been following me for a long time will remember me saying it. Look at this bush. Look at those bushes. Look at this bush. Look at that bush. Look at that bush. Look at those bushes going in a straight line that way, okay? Let me zoom in there. Look at the green, okay? And, and it runs on a straight line that way. Now, all of the rest of the desert, let me see if I can face this way, and we'll zoom in. You look at all of the bush out there, it's all dried, the leaves are all falling off of it. Um, it's brown. It's pretty much looking like it's dying off. Well, that happens. This is, uh, these are greasewood bushes, and um, they don't get a lot of water, but they've adapted to living out here. But I haven't been watering out here, but look at how nice and green these bushes are. Okay, so what that tells me is somewhere down below this ground, there's an underground stream. And I got a fire ant on my foot, so I guess I had to kick him off. A little bugger bit me. And uh, anyway, oh, that burns like a cigarette. Whew! What a nice sting. Anyway, the uh, I'm going to move up out of this hole and get away from those ants. Um, I'm thinking that I might come during the day when it's uh, when the sun's a little warmer. All those ants are gone and might take my auger and start digging a hole right in the center here, right in the center of the pond, because I'm gonna be removing more stuff out of here, down the line, whenever, whenever I can afford a, uh, another new ATV or even rent a backhoe or a front loader or something like that to dig this out a little deeper. But I'm thinking that uh, because greasewood bushes, usually um, they'll send a taproot down, oh God, at least 12 or 15 feet. And a taproot will be looking for the water and it'll send other roots down there to collect water. Well, with this whole dry season that we've had, the fact that these bushes are green here means they're getting water from somewhere. All right, so that's an important thing to me to know and uh i want to dig this thing down and dig down and dig down but i've got caliche but this is a natural stream bed that's been here for oh god as long as uh anybody can remember most likely but the thing is that this whole area of desert all the way around as you as you look around you can see the shorelines on the sides of the mountain over there. This whole area was a lake bed. And those mountains up there are full of quartz and mines. And, and I know that they're, they're mining up there and I'm finding quartz all over this property. So in the, when the rains are heavy, in those years of heavy rains, the rushing water comes down those mountains, comes down these streams, and it carries rocks and sediment with it. Now, I have found some small um, fines, is what they call them, F-I-N-E-S, which is fine powdered gold out here. Although I did find one pretty decent little nugget about the size of a BB. And uh, I found that just prospecting in the stream beds on my property. So um, besides that, I've also found all of the signs of the proper minerals, rocks and minerals, that uh, associate with gold. So the fact that there's caliche down there, which is a hard surface, that'll actually be act, act like a bedrock in a lot of cases. And as a bedrock, it will um, stop gold from sinking. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get down to that caliche, open up a big enough area around down to that caliche, and then start digging into the caliche, and I'll probably have to use my jackhammer, 
but I've got electricity, ha ha ha. And I've got electricity in my van, which I could park right here and get out there and start digging. And I wanna see and set samples of that. I'll get my, uh, my sluice box running and I'll put some samples through the sluice box and see if I come up with anything. And then I might have a new chore and that would be digging a gold, gold mine where my pond is gonna go. And if I accidentally hit water, oh well, I'll have to quit digging. But uh, then I'll have a pond full of water. That'd be interesting. Anyway, we won't know about that until the time comes. The weather this year has been the strangest I have ever seen for this desert. And right now, I just uh, checked my calendar because I marked the high temperatures every day on the calendar. And we're going into the sixth week of 100 degree temperatures. And that's really out of the ordinary. And you remember in the spring, I had trouble getting my garden going because it would warm up like it was springtime. It was 80 degrees, just beautiful. And then all of a sudden the next day it was 30 degrees or 28 degrees. So it was just a really weird weather pattern this year. And uh, well, that happens. You know, there, you can't guarantee that the same pattern is gonna be with you every single day, but We'll have to do something about uh, making it work for me, right? So anyway, that's uh, the information on Caliche, which is also, by the way, known as uh, some, some people call it Calcrete or Hard Pan or Duracrust, things like that. So I was going to bring my pinpointer out and uh, check around, but... See, a lot of people don't realize that um, metal detectors and pinpointers are great for nuggets, even small nuggets. But for fines, where there's just a few little specks of gold, um, they'll very seldom even sound off on that. So uh, you gotta, you've gotta really dig it out, pan it, and sample. And then if you start finding nuggets, then you can get down in there with a metal detector and a pinpointer and start uh, uh, finding the, the targets and going after those. All right. Anyway, that's about all I have. Um, the weather has been hot and humid. And uh, you see the winds are blowing. You see the flag going and the turbine going. And you see the swing moving. And I used to sit out here a lot in the evenings to cool off. Uh, back when I was a swinger. Oh. Anyway, now... I pretty much all the time come out and I sit here. But I've got to do a little modification to this setup. And that is, I'm gonna move my hummingbird feeders. You see my hummingbird feeders? Well, the winds blow and that's what happens. I get hummingbird feeder juice all over the chair and then you sit down and you have no choice but to whatever you are going to do, you're going to stick to it. Oh, God, that was another pun. Oh, I am so punny today. Anyway, there's Tomcat up there on top of his little tote. That's his favorite place in the afternoon when the winds start blowing. He loves sitting up there. Hi, Tomcat. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, he loves being up there. And uh, he's getting a little more brave around me. See, his eyes are closed. He doesn't... He doesn't really care that I'm here. He knows I'm not his enemy. I'm the guy that brings food and water to him all the time and cleans his litter box. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, he was in my garage the other day, and I went in there, and normally uh, you would think that they would run and try to scoop past you real quick. Well, he just turned and looked at me, and I talked to him and as I walked by, and then he just walked out of the garage. All right, that's all I have, everybody. Thank you for joining me in this episode. Don't forget thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe and share and all that kind of neat stuff. And we'll be seeing you again on another episode. I may even break out the metal detector tomorrow and see what I can find. This is G-Bear signing off.